In the not too distant past, if you wanted to get a message out, the channels were clear. It was once commonplace that people gathered around a radio or awaited the arrival of the morning paper to learn the relevant news of the day. In that environment, it was possible for powerful messages of faith to have a prominent place in mainstream media and influence public behavior. On March 26, 1949, a nationwide radio program was broadcast called One Great Hour. Those gathered in front of the radios heard President Harry S. Truman issue a challenge to the nation. The program closed with a request that listeners attend their local church the following morning and make a contribution to relieve the human suffering. It is estimated that 75,000 local churches participated and the effort gave rise to the annual ecumenical outreach known today as One Great Hour of Sharing. While it took radio 38 years to reach 50 million users, TV accomplished that same feat in just 13, and it took the internet a mere four years to achieve that same benchmark. Yet all of that pales in comparison to the fact that Facebook has attracted four times that number of users in under one year, and now has 845 million active users. In our media-saturated age, we are bombarded with thousands of messages a day, Yet we are left hungering for that one message that speaks to our souls and gives our lives meaning. The faith community has that message, the one truth, and through the power of communications, it can transform lives. Years ago, the story of Jesus, God's love told through parable, act, and symbol, was told originally in the language of the street, in a manner that could be understood by every element of society, from the affluent to the overlooked. The language of the street in our day is the language of the iPad, the laptop, the mobile phone, the language of electronic culture that travels with us through every moment of our day. The United Methodist Church has begun to speak this new language. It is one of the few denominations that has not reduced their outreach through media. In fact, quite the opposite. While others are pulling back, we are moving forward. By maintaining its presence in public media, the United Methodist Church has raised its visibility and is now one of the most well-known mainline denominations. Rethink Church activities supported with communications translate into stronger likelihood to visit a local church. And a media presence provides for a positive image for the church locally and globally, inspiring others to join our efforts. In the past decade, the United Methodist Church has been a prominent force in relieving suffering. Malaria's impact in Africa has been cut nearly in half in just a few short years due to a dedicated, integrated, and comprehensive approach that built and fostered partnerships to fight this preventable disease. There were compassionate responses by donors to crisis communications that helped put a human face on the tragedy. Communicating strategically in the global media environment in which we live today is doing theology. We will not reach this generation by issuing pronouncements, but by meeting them where they are and through all the medium and channels with which they engage, and by including them in our mission to change the world. We must speak a new language to communicate faith in the 21st century. We must communicate strategically, carefully, and with compassion. And we must speak to the hearts and minds of those different than us. Together, our voice can be heard, our lives shared, our stories told. We must speak so that the good news is more than heard. It is lived.